Right now on ABC 10 News at 4 o'clock, temperatures soar as the dangerous temperatures continue. Power outages are also planned across parts of the county. How residents are taking it in stride as they try to beat the heat. Plus an uptick in COVID-related hospitalizations in San Diego. What the upward trend could mean and the renewed push from health experts to get vaccinated. And the new revelations about the massive fire on the USS Bonham Richard. ABC 10 News at 4 starts now. A heat wave continues to blanket much of San Diego County, and for some, it's a little more difficult to cool off, with SDG&E's planned outages happening this week. Thank you for joining us. I'm Kimberly Hunt, and we'll get to the forecast in just a bit. But first, ABC 10 News reporter Mimi Alcala is live in Ramona, where the temperature there climbed into the high 90s today. Mimi. Hi, Kimberly. It is hot out here right now, but the people we spoke to say this is to be expected. It's typical weather and they aren't too impacted by it. But for those who do need a place to cool off, the library here right off of Main Street is a designated cool zone so people can come sit here and get some air conditioning Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. But hours can also be extended depending on the need. It's pretty much expected every summer. Heat advisories and warnings for much of San Diego County have been extended through Thursday. In Ramona, temperatures reached the high 90s Wednesday afternoon, something residents say they're pretty used to in August. Been relatively tame, if you ask me. Usually we have a few more hundred plus degree days. But at a time where air conditioning may be crucial for some, sdg &E has some planned power outages across the county. Typically, these outages only last a few hours and residents are given a notice beforehand. SDG &E says it does this to repair equipment, update systems, and work on wildfire mitigation in high risk areas. In Ramona, a couple of outages are planned for required repairs to SDG&E's electrical system. The county has a cold zone for residents who need some relief, open during the week at the Ramona Library from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Ramona resident Andrew says he dodged the outages this time, but he's been through plenty living here to be prepared. It's just pretty much the norm nowadays, so, um, but SDG&E, they do a good job of letting us know when it's going to happen with the app and everything like that, so that's pretty reliable. Luckily for us, we're going on vacation tomorrow, so it won't bother us whatsoever. And coming up at 5 o'clock, we heard from a business owner who says when outages do happen, he always has a backup plan to make sure he can keep his business running. We're live in Ramona, Mimi Alcala, ABC 10 News. They are taking it in stride. Thank you, Mimi. In the last 90 minutes, firefighters stopped a three-acre fire from spreading in Valley Center. Crews remain on the scene to strengthen containment lines there. Broke out off Castle Road Road, uh, Castle Road just after 1 o'clock this afternoon. The fire reportedly threatened nearby structures, which led to brief evacuations for the area near Lilac Road and Robles Lane. No reports of any injuries or damage. Let's bring in meteorologist Angelica Campos as we take a live look outside. In parts of the county, the dangerous heat will last a couple more days, Angelica. That's right, Kim. It's been hot all week and this will go on for at least one more day. It'll start to feel better later in the week and for the weekend it should be returning back to normal. But in the meantime, we still have to be extra cautious as temperatures remain above average. We're in the low 90s now in Ramona, so we've seen a bit of an improvement since earlier this afternoon when the numbers were in the upper 90s, as Mimi showed you. In Warner Springs, 99, 88 in Escondido and 76 in Vista. The excess, excessive heat warning as well as the heat advisory will remain in effect for one more day. Temperatures in our deserts could range between 115 to 120 degrees, and we've already seen numbers as high as 118. We'll have a full list of the temperatures today, some of the hottest places, and what to expect heading into tomorrow. And you can keep track of the forecast by heading to our website, 10news.com. We also have a link to the cold zones available countywide to help you beat the heat. San Diego County is seeing a spike in not only the number of people getting COVID, but also those having to be hospitalized. Local hospitals reported numbers this week that haven't been seen since the spring. ABC 10 News anchor Lindsay Pena spoke to one doctor about what it means and the trends that they're also seeing in children. 
This graph shows the number of patients in San Diego County hospitals with COVID. On Tuesday, for the first time since March, those numbers passed 400. However, this is not indicative of concern that we're going to fill up all of our hospital beds. With over 70% of San Diego vaccinated, we know that it's primarily the unvaccinated individuals who are at higher risk. Dr. Christopher Longhurst with UCSD Health says case positivity rates are also going up, including among children. It's probably a confluence of factors, right? Um, and the two biggest, uh, number one is the Delta variant, and number two is um, our change in public health measures, right? June 15th, we opened up the state, everybody unmasked, and then Delta came back. Dr. Longhurst says since children under 12 still aren't cleared to be vaccinated, the best way to protect them is for those around them to get the shot if they can. He also says there are many reasons that some folks are still unvaccinated and urges those with questions or concerns to speak to their doctors. When we look at our forecast using best available data, we're seeing the numbers continue to increase in September and October unless there's uh, significant changes from a public health standpoint. Lindsay Pena, ABC 10 News. More testing sites are opening around the county to handle the uptick in cases. You can go to our website, 10news.com, for a list of all of the locations. We wanted to get a better sense of how San Diegans and the rest of the state feel about the Delta variant. Our scientific ABC 10 News Union Tribune poll asked 650 adults in our county how concerned they are about the Delta variant. 40% said somewhat, 32% said very. 15% not very concerned, 9% not at all, and 4% were not sure. And when we widened that to the statewide level, the results were similar. Out of the 1,100 adults that were surveyed, 45% said they're very concerned about the Delta variant, 29% are somewhat concerned, 12 not very concerned, 9% not at all, and 5% were not sure. The FDA is working to fully approve Pfizer's COVID vaccine by the end of summer. Health officials hope that the status will motivate more Americans to get vaccinated and it could also prompt more vaccine mandates and speed up the approval process for kids under 12. When you have an e-way for the vaccine that then goes to a full approval that might have an influence on what goes on. We're collecting the data right now for what we need to make that determination. Now, in the meantime, more kids are getting sick with COVID. There's a 33,000 case increase last week compared to the week before. The World Health Organization has already told people not to seek a third booster shot, and now the agency is calling for an official moratorium, citing vaccine inequity around the world. Now, it would last at least two months. The WHO's director wants to meet a goal of vaccinating 10% of every country's population by the end of September. This moratorium could last longer if that goal isn't met. Now, meanwhile, health officials in San Francisco are allowing an additional COVID shot under some specific circumstances. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine is proving to be only 60% effective against the Delta variant. People who receive the J&J shot and have a recommendation from their doctor are eligible for an mRNA vaccine in San Francisco. Now, some people have started to get cancer screenings again after these numbers were way down last year. But medical experts are worried that people are still delaying these appointments and that could be putting them at risk for being diagnosed with cancer at more advanced stages. Research from the Community Oncology Alliance shows there was an 85% drop in breast cancer screenings in 2020. For colon cancer screenings, it was down 75%. Even when rates of COVID are increased and we all have fear and trepidation about going out into the community, um, it is safe to see your medical professional. When you go out and into a clinic, you should be masked, um, uh, but that it's a safe thing to have happen. And it is something that makes such a world of difference in our ability to diagnose cancer early and cure it. Community Oncology Alliance and Cancer Care have launched a new campaign called Time to Screen. The oncologist that we talked with says it will likely take years to catch up with all the missed screenings. All cancer screenings are important, but some could have even greater priority. Breast, colon, and lung cancer are, uh, are and cervical cancer are all the most evidence-based um, screens where clearly early detection saves lives. Well, she's concerned about black Americans who she says are having greater challenges in getting screened during the pandemic than others. Black American adults have higher death rates than all other racial and ethnic groups for many cancer types. Cancer is also the leading cause of death among Hispanic adults. Now, you can get connected to screening locations close to you at timetoscreen.org. You can also 
Get those locations by calling the number you see on your screen, 1-855-53-SCREEN. Certain communities are more likely to fall for one scam versus another. The tactics that black and brown communities